You ready? All right. Good morning. Welcome. It is so great to see so many people here today. This is a really exciting day, not just for Fayetteville or the region, but for the entire state. Um, I've been anxiously awaiting this day for several months now. I had the opportunity to meet with Charlie about a year ago now um, and to talk about this project. He is someone who really loves Fayetteville. He's a native to the town. He can tell you all kinds of stories about being in these buildings as a child and his children as well. He opened his first hotel in the 80s in Oak Hill, and since then, he and his team have done 27 hotels, 11 of them here in West Virginia. So in that first meeting, I told him that it was my challenge and my mission to make sure that he started doing more hotels in West Virginia. So I am thrilled to be here today to join hands with all of you as we open his 11th hotel in West Virginia. I don't want to get ahead of Charlie in talking about these projects, but I do want to tell you that I wandered through the school. I got here a little early, and there's a note on one of the chalkboards in the room, and I want to read to you all what it says. It says, hi, if you were reading this right now, you have bought this building. I just want you to know that in this building, there have been lots and lots of memories made, some good and some bad. This building is special to a lot of people. As of right now, it's the last day of school in 2019 for Fayetteville Elementary School. So all I'm trying to say is do something special and take care of this building. It means a lot to so many people. So I wish I could have found the little girl who wrote this note, but I haven't. But if you're out there, I would love to meet you. Um, we will have here, her here the day that we open the school. But I want to end by saying that I don't know where she is or who she is, but I am certain that she will be very, very proud of the special project that's going to happen here in this building. So without any more, Charlie, I'd like to welcome you up to tell us all about the project. Uh, I'm not going to take uh, long, so don't worry about that. Uh, I will say that um, the accommodations are Spartan, but if they weren't Spartan, we wouldn't be here. Uh, and that's what gives us the opportunity. Uh, so I welcome you all to the uh, Fayetteville Grade School Gymnasium, uh, Governor Justice, uh, Senator Shelley Moore Capito, uh, Congressman Miller, uh, West Virginia Treasurer Riley Moore, who is here, uh, members of our state legislature who are here, uh, Secretary Chelsea Ruby, uh, Curator Randall Reed Smith is supposed to be here, uh, County Commission President uh, Allison Taylor, Mayor Sharon Crookshank, and uh, my wife of 50 plus years, Kay, and my oldest son, Dr. Wendell, are here, by the way, along with my younger son, Stephen, who is in the business with me, and I'll show you one little story about him. Uh, he's an attorney, uh, and he, after graduating from uh, Virginia Law School, he was working in um, uh, New York and called me about a year into his work and said, Dad, I've wanted to work with you since I was in the fifth grade. May I come with you? The key word being may. And uh, so he is working with us too, very uh, completely in these projects. And so uh, he, along with Preston and myself and Kay, although one year after me, all went to the first grade in this building. Uh, I want to 1,000% acknowledge that this day would not be possible uh, were it not for the incredible insight and forethought of our local, state, and national leaders who enacted historic tax credits, tourism tax credit, residential tax credits, and other incentives, and then on top of all of that, uh, made the New, New River Gorge Preserve our 63rd National Park. Uh, all I can say is to all of you for that, thank you, uh, especially Shelley and Joe and Congressman Miller. Two words come to my mind, uh, and I thought long and hard about this. Uh, when I think of the project, one is excited and two is humbled. I'm extremely excited to rejuvenate um, a place 
that has provided so many wonderful memories throughout my life. Far too many to recount, but I would give one example. Sitting in my office today is a picture of my grade school basketball team, which was taken right there. Charlie Morton standing over there was in the picture. Uh, and also in this gym, taken in this corner, is a picture of my dad's 1939 Fayetteville High School basketball team. So uh, those memories, along with many others, uh, resonate from here. I'm humbled. I'm humbled thinking of the Italian stone builders who came from the town of Piedra Cavallo, which means foot of the horse, uh, who still live, who are still have descendants living in Fayetteville today. Now, Kay and I have visited that town, and it's like a mini Fayetteville, where Fayetteville's a mini uh, Piedra Cavallo. And they built the high school on the hill, and if you're into construction like I am, or like our architect, and you go look at the, the joints in the stone from a building built in 1923, they're untouched. They're just like they were 100 years ago. And they also built timeless stone walls and other buildings that we see uh, throughout our town today. I'm humbled thinking of my family's long history in Fed County and Fayetteville that dates back to the very beginning of both. I'm especially thinking of my mother who truly loved Fayetteville and was instrumental in the establishment of the Fayetteville Historic District. I know my mom and dad will be watching uh, fondly, although I'm sure my mother would have critical comments uh, as we try to transform uh, these old schools into a welcoming home for our citizens and for our guests. Fayetteville, West Virginia is my home. And although we have developed 27 hotels in 10 different states, I'm extremely humbled to have the opportunity to honor all of those who have come before me by making this project the best one we've ever attempted to complete. I give you my solemn oath, I'll do my best to not let anyone down. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are so, so excited. So I've told this story before, and a lot of you have heard it, but I think back to the governor's first inauguration. It was a day kind of like today. It was pretty cold. We were sitting out there, and I didn't really know the governor well. At this point, I think he had interviewed me four or five times, so we had met. Um, and he was talking about all the things that were going to happen in the tourism industry in West Virginia. Now, at this point, tourism in West Virginia had been declining for about four years. And he was, I remember he was talking about Pure Michigan, and he was saying, we are going to change the way people think about West Virginia. To be really honest, I was sitting there with knots in my stomach thinking, gosh, I hope we can do this. He's got really, really big aspirations for what we do. He repeatedly said, we're going to transform the industry. He talked about the different changes, about the perceptions that people had of West Virginia. Now, five years later, look at where he's taken us. The industry is growing. Since he's been in office, every single one of our counties have seen an increase in tourism. We're setting all kinds of records. We've been recognized by nearly every travel publication in the world. We're one of the nation's top tourism destinations, and this area has been coined one of the world's greatest places. The secret's out, and it's out because of Governor Justice. Governor, thank you for taking us on this amazing journey. Who would have thought five years ago we'd be opening new hotels and cutting ribbons every week? But we are absolutely very, very thankful for everything you've done. So without further ado, Governor Justice. Y'all are going to have to forgive me because, you know, I've got to tell you just this real quick. but. Uh, you know, Charlie was talking to me just a second ago about playing basketball against Billy Carbonet, and, you know, and, and I've got a lot of great fond memories of, 
of all those times and watching those tremendous athletes. Well, I, I was an athlete too, and I played a lot, but I was too slow to get out of the way, and I got hit all the time. And, and like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm on the glide path to have a hip replacement, and I've got two bad knees. I need two knee replacements as well. But in all of that, you know, you, you know, one time I had brown hair and I was skinny. I guess when your knees start hurting and your hips start hurting or whatever it may be, you slow down just a little bit, and then you find your way to the chocolate cake and things like that. But with all that being said, uh, my knees hurt, but this hip deal, is the real deal. Now, it really hurts. So, so forgive me for sitting here talking with you, but uh, I just want to talk with you just a few minutes and just, just say just a few things. There's some really important people here. You know, Congressman Miller just left and everything. She had, you know, a prior engagement and everything. We've got our senator here. It's amazing, amazing. You know, Senator Capito is unbelievable. You know, she's a great friend, and, and absolutely what she does every day is phenomenal. She just got back from Poland, you know, and I would, I would ask all of you to always just take a minute or two and just think of how tough things are on those folks over there in Ukraine right now. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I know in your heart you stand right with them, and I do too. And I stand with them, and I said this the other night, and Shelly heard me say this, I stand with them because I truly believe that God stands with them. And I believe we should stand with God. And so at the end of the day, I really truly believe without belaboring into we ought to be completely energy independent. And absolutely all of us, every single one of us here, owe a lot of gratitude towards our coal miners. And now, and now the, the gift that the good Lord just gave us in every way, all of our gas workers, oil workers, and everything else. We all embrace all the alternatives, don't we? We all do. We want the pristine waters and the clean air, and we want every bit of that. But we know today, today we've been called upon again with our fossil fuels being kicked every way you can possibly kick them. You know, we've been called on again, like in World War I and II, to save the world, maybe. Well, you know, all that being said, in this great building, now you have Charlie and Kay and Doc, you know, and, and they're about to embark on something that is unbelievable for this area. It is truly amazing. You know, we have our treasurer here, Riley. You know, we have, we have senators, I think, and, and, and as well as House members, and we have, you know, our commissioners and everything. here. We've got a lot of important people here. But it takes somebody to step up like these people are stepping up. It really does. It's amazing how we almost yearn to come home. We really do. You know, West Virginia gave us something so special. It gave us, you know, our love and our roots and all that. But it gave us the ability to really appreciate others. And I want to tell you this, you know, you couldn't have said anything, Charlie, any, any, any more profound to me in the world than you saying, you know, that you spent a lot of time with my dad, you know, and uh, because I really refer to my dad an awful lot, you know, my mom and dad and everything, but my dad was my best man in my wedding and was always there, always. Now, I got, I've got to just tell you just this, and I want everybody everybody to know that these people could be doing lots of stuff. They could be doing lots of stuff lots of different places. They've chosen us again, have they not? They've chosen us because they want to do more good stuff in West Virginia. Now we got it going on here. I mean there's no question that you know Secretary Ruby and I don't know where she went right now but and all <laughs> hey and you know, she just leaned over back there, you know. And all the people that I've already referred to, I mean, you just think, we have the latest national park. We have numbers like you can't imagine. Everything is really cooking in West Virginia. But it still takes people like you. 
it still takes people to really step up and say, we want to help. And absolutely, it will not go unnoticed. You know, you can be assured, be assured in every way that the people of this great community and our great state will never forget. We'll never forget what you're doing because it's just that meaningful. And that's what makes our souls so good. You know, I, 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 all I can say is it's been a real ride. I've been a believer just like their believers. My belief was just simply just this. And this, is, this goes back to them talking about the ball team. You know, I really believe that West Virginia has the most four most beautiful seasons. They're not too severe at all of maybe any state. I believe that we abound in natural resources like nobody's business, and we should be proud of that. We should diversify like crazy and do all the things we're doing, but we should still be proud of who we are. And I really believe and know we're within a rock's throw of two-thirds of the population of the country. And I know without any question just how good you really are. I know you're craftsmen, you're faith-based, you're really good, good people, you're family. You know the difference between right and wrong. This world today has gotten to be a place to where it doesn't matter what's right and wrong. All that matters is what you can get by with. That's not you. So with all those four things that I said, the seasons, the natural resources, the proximity to two-thirds of the population and how good you really are. How could you lose? How could you pitch 50th every single solitary year over and over and over, dead last? And in a contest nonstop to see who would be more dead last, Mississippi or us? And I hope nobody's here from Mississippi. But really and truly, that's what I thought on day one. And I wasn't going to turn it loose. And that's what they think too. And so they're absolutely now stepping up and bringing something really, really, really special to us. You know, Charlie, the only thing, I know you were a heck of a player. But I know if you had Charlie Morton on your team, you all must not have been very good. <laughs> Charlie, I, I'm giving you a hard time, Charlie. I love you with all my soul. <laughs> well, nevertheless, I, I could go on and on and on. You don't need to hear that. You know, uh, the only other thing, I've got, I've got to read you this real quick, if I've got my phone. Yeah, I do. Last night, this will just take me a second, just bear with me a second, okay? Last night at... Who knows what time? At 8.40 on Sunday night. So y'all don't think that I'm completely crazy. I've gotten request after request after request. Are you bringing baby dog? Will you please have baby dog? And I'm thinking, for God's sakes of living, I mean, Somebody ought to be happy to see me sometime. <laughs> but anyway, I've got baby dog. She'll come out. She's going to sit here. And if anybody wants to come over and say hi to baby dog when we're done, y'all are welcome to do that. But uh, you got to get her. Sammy, just turn her loose. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. Take your time. Come on, baby. Baby, come on over here. Come on. <laughs> Come on, girl. Come on. Baby dog. Come here. Come here. Get in your chair. Come on. Get in your chair. Go on. No, no, not this chair. This chair. Come on. Get up there. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, now I'm done talking. I'm back to you. Sit down there, girl. 
Welcome, baby dog. I don't know how to follow that one. All right. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, baby dog, for being with us today. <laughs> So next, I have the great privilege of introducing our great senator, Senator Shelley Moore Capito. So some of you may not realize what goes into getting a new national park, and admittedly, I didn't either until about two years ago. Um, and I can tell you that it was not a straight road to get here. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of commitment. So the New River Gorge National Park and Preserve is the 63rd national park. The first one, Yellowstone, was created in 1872. So that tells you, this doesn't happen very often, and it's a big, big deal. Even in a pandemic, we've seen visitation to this area grow by more than 30%. And what I think is really cool about it, as you all know, this park spans multiple counties. We're seeing growth in every area. It's all across the entire park. So, Senator, I want to thank you for your efforts to get us where we are today. Um, again, I know it was a long road, but we really appreciate you staying after it. So, thank you. Well, thank you, Chelsea, and uh, thank you, Governor, for the kind words, and thank you, Baby Dog, for uh, getting everybody vaccinated, as many as we could. That was a great program. Marketing genius over here. We already know that. Um, but as I see the Wendell family, all I can, and our families go back uh, many, many decades, and my nephew Riley here, we were talking about that earlier. But I think when I heard uh, Charlie talk, I, th I think about the movie I used to watch all the time with my children, The Wizard of Oz, and that is There's No Place Like Home. And for them, there's no place like home. The memories that are here, the, uh, the people that everybody grew up with and the community love that is still very, very vibrant in Fayetteville and in the region in, in Fayette County. So when Chelsea and a lot of the other leaders with the, with the governor came to us in Washington, and I see many of the folks in the back there, they said, you know, really, a, a, a national park designation would change the face of this region. And so we got to work. Senator Manchin and I and Congresswoman uh, Miller carried the bill over on the House side. And Chelsea's right. It's not a lot of people want a national park for obvious reasons now. We see it, it, it grows your tourism. It grows your development. It grows the attractiveness to your region. And we were able to push that across the finish line at the end of not this past year, but the year before. And so it's a great source of pride for me. Uh, I'm going to be partial to seeing the pictures of the new River Gorge Bridge, which we know who built that, don't we? Yes. And, uh, and so uh, just the way it's been capitalized in this region. And the governor's just done incredible work. To, to make sure that every, every T is crossed and every I is dotted to make sure that West Virginia, uh, the state, and the federal are working together. So I see the park officials here. I thank you for your great work that you do. Um, the last thing I would say is I want to thank uh, Charlie and Kay and, and, and the doc and Stephen for investing in our state, for investing in our people. I've met some construction folks who are going to be the beneficiary of a lot of the work here in and around the region. I think this will be a good footprint for lots of other growth. Uh, there's a big infrastructure bill out there that we passed bipartisan. Uh, I know there's water issues in the county and there's always transportation issues. So we need to make sure we're all working together to make sure we capitalize on that for the rest of the region. So thanks for the privilege of being here today. It's always great to be with you, Governor. Thank you all very much. These projects don't happen without a lot of support, support at every level, which is why it's so exciting to see folks here at every level. Um, so next up, I want to introduce to you the Fayette County Commission President, Allison Taylor. Good morning, everybody. I wanted to first, I want to thank Mr. Wendell for this project. I, I don't know how many of you know that we lost one of our historic buildings in Montgomery this past couple of weeks due to fire. Um, the old high school, middle school was already toppled. So I love seeing projects like this happen in our county um, so we can preserve these beautiful old buildings. Um, our commission has been very proactive in trying to budget for the memorial buildings, some of the other buildings we have in town to make sure we can keep those going. Um, other things we're doing, I'm very excited to tell you that, that our 
federal and state representatives have been great about working with the county commission, letting us know about funding opportunities so we can bring infrastructure to this county, the water, the sewer. Um, we have some major developments. We have an international company from India that's expressed interest in moving here off of Route 60 and Route 19 that will create 30 to 60 jobs repairing mining equipment, Caterpillar mining equipment. And they're ready to get going pretty soon, and this is one of the areas they're looking at. And we've offered to make, do anything we can to bring them here. You know, talk to us, tell us what incentives you need, and we'll, we'll try to accommodate you. We have a big development. I saw one of our developers, Ashton Critchley. She's developing across the river in the same area. Um, we've got other um, people, two other developers interested in that same area around here. And so all we need is water and sewer to get them going. Um, so I'm really excited that we have had all these infrastructure dollars coming in and we are working proactively on your behalf to cause the growth. And I know a lot of people are worried about overgrowth. I don't think that can happen because in 1990 we had a 30% increase in population and we had a great quality of life in this county. We have only 40,000 people here now. Uh, we can accommodate the growth and still not turn into an obnoxious place to live. Um, I think our quality of life and our people, as the governor pointed out, are going to keep it small in hometown um, because that's who we are. Um, I'm one of the kids who had to go away and then come home. Um, I yearned for West Virginia. I yearned for Tudors and, and Frank's Pizza in Montgomery. And um, now I'm back and, and I'm really happy to be here working for you. And all you have to do is come to us and let us know what you need. But at the federal level, we're, we're open. State level, we're open. Um, and citizens, of course, you're always welcome to talk to us and let us know what you see and your ideas. So thanks a lot for being here. Thank you. And last but not least, we've got our tourism champion and mayor of Fayetteville, Sharon Crookshanks. Thank you, and um, thank you, Governor, for coming. I'm up for knee replacement this Thursday, so I totally understand <laughs> how you feel. I, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone for coming. Um, how many alumni are in this um, room right now, FHS alumni? <laughs> so I love you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Um, as a member of the last class to graduate in 1976, um, to say I'm thrilled is an understatement, Charlie. Um, since receiving our schools from the Fayette County Board of Education, um, it has been a focus of several town councils to find the perfect partnership uh, in the preservation of these historic schools. The partnership that would serve our communities, and that was always a key focus. What will serve our community and help it to grow? They say that anything worth having is worth waiting for, um, and to say that we waited for the perfect partnership with Charlie, Kay, Preston, and Stephen uh, is an understatement. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to our elected officials and our, our tourism partners throughout. We appreciate you greatly. Thank you.